Hello, everybody, wherever you may be, from coast to coast and sea to shine and sea. Welcome back to Ham Radio Live. My goodness, we are already at show number 500. Yee-haw! Welcome back. will be her if she's ready for flow. Oh, Mississippi, she's calling my name. Catfish are jumping that paddle wheel bumping. Black water keep rolling on fast just the same. Oh, black water keep on rolling. Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on me? Oh, black water keep on rolling. Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on me? Oh, black water keep on rolling. Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on me? Keep on shining in your life Gonna make everything great Mama gonna make everything all right Wherever you may be in this great big world of ours, it has been a long time. And my goodness, am I grateful to see you all from around the world, wherever you are. Welcome back. Away we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Shack in Oregon. It is so good to see you and be back. Wow. A very happy Wednesday. It's July 27th, 19, sorry, 2022, 19, great. It's been a while, I'll tell you folks. Um, for, for people who've had COVID, you know what it's like, and voice is still not back. That is the worst thing I've ever had. So I, I would encourage you, please keep your hands washed and please take everything seriously because it is no fun to have this. I wanna thank you for being patient and kind. Thank you for your love and decency. I mean that with all my heart. Thank you so much. That's mighty hospitable of you. Thank you very much. It's good to be back. All right, guys, we're hopeful to get you into amateur radio. We'd like to help you get your license. If you don't know where to start, contact the American Radio Relay League, www.arrl.org. Great place to get you started. They'll help you get your amateur radio license, and we appreciate it if you just hit that contact us bar. We are also on shortwave, believe it or not. We really are. This is going to cause more confusion than a mouse in a burlesque show. <laughs> of course, yeah. CQ calling powered by ICOM for the love of ham radio. There's a time and day and frequency there near you please listen to it you'll hear it on short wave also we have an email at cq ham radio live gmail.com and a discord page just called ham dash radio dash live i'll put a link to it in the description section of this video we've got a show question for show 500 why not have a show question if you could test drive any radio which radio would it be and why let us know we'll make it part of today's show all right Let's take a look at the weather first, and then we got a special guest for him. I'm really excited to bring him in. That'll be a lot of fun. The weather today is powered by ICOM. ICOM for the love of ham radio. Here's your A1A, and it is really bleak compared to when we left you. No more gentleman stuff. Yeah. From now on, you fight my way. Right. Dirty. Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. Where did the sunspots go? Here's a little bit of the backside view of the sun. You can see a little squared area where we're going to get another sunspot, but actually there's just four that are facing Earth right now. Coronal holes, there they are, and of course they're they're causing a little bit of a rise in our A index. Nothing terrible, but there is some, you know, there is some condition from this, and we just try and just get through it, and uh, better days are ahead. We'll put it that way, all right? Here is a five-day look at the magnetosphere view. That's one of the things I didn't stop doing. I kept doing the weather uh, every day that I could. And so the last five days, we'll show you the progression of sunspots and what's happened, where they've gone, and where they currently are. So let's start out here with five days ago. Here is your magnetosphere view of the sun. It was a big happy party right there. Look at that. You've got eight sunspot regions to be grateful for. And then all of a sudden, as the week went on, look what happens. The sunspots start to go away until we finally come to today. And that's what's left. So we don't have a huge sunspot number for you today, nor a huge SFI, but things will get better. Three days of geomagnetic activity. Just missed an M-class flare yesterday and almost one today. It's still a little bit quiet out there. SFI of 99, down three from yesterday. Sunspot number 78, down 22 from yesterday. Area numbers up 10, though, to 209. 
90. K index is quiet. K2, that's good. We want to keep this K index down around 2 if we can. Three day geomagnetic forecast should have quiet conditions on the nighttime bands at least until Friday night. So decent conditions for you until Friday evening. Your QRZ conditions are right here. SF5 99, solar number 51, A index is 8. And that's why it's a little elevated from the coronal holes that are facing us. K is only 2. BZ latitude, a positive 2.7. And the solar winds up to 415.2 kilometers per second. You've got 6, 4, and 2 meter e-skip open today. Now, I say cut that out. What's it all about, boy? Elucidate. Okay, so that means on those bands you'll be able to work some skip on the east be part of your of your ionosphere is what that means and i think the hf conditions here are pretty darn close i don't know that we'll get past 15 meters today in the north here's your kilo charlie 2 golf map if you're in canada right now right about 21 megahertz so you're on 15 meters up in alaska 16 out of fairbanks 19 near denver 18 panhandle of florida up around the great lakes 18 megahertz See, things are just really low 17 meter band for the most part here in the states head down towards south america 29 north brazil 23, look at that, only a 23 in Sao Paulo, 32 in southern Brazil, heading towards Europe, 20 megahertz Great Britain, 21 in France, 20 Germany, 24 Italy, 26 in uh, Bulgaria, and 10 right there around the north part of the Middle East, heading towards Tokyo, 16 megahertz, and in Australia right now. You're on the 40 meter band, nothing big happening, but some decent conditions. Your forecast for today, powered by ICOM, I come for the love of ham radios. SFI is to stay stable at or near 100 through Friday. Noise floors to be quiet. S0 to S1 through Friday night. Voice bands in the north, 20, 17, 15. You might get 12 and 10. It'll be late in the day, and you'll be in the southern part of the northern hemisphere to get it. Equatorial latitudes, you have everything. It's a big old house party for you. 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10. Southern hemisphere, you get most of it there as well. 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10. Data modes, 30 to 10 meters all latitudes. 10 meter band on data late in the day here in the northern hemisphere. Low noise for us through Friday night on the ham bands. Noise, uh, sorry, nighttime handband openings 160, 80, 75, 60, 40, 30. Your best DX, maximum usable frequency at sunset. Then scoot on down to 20 meters. Stay and have some fun a while, and then go to 40 and 80 and have some good conditions. Shortwave fa fans today, 31, 25, 22, and the 19 meter band should be open for you daytime. Shortwave nighttime bands 160, 90, 75, sorry, 120, just a second. A drink of water was well needed. A shortwave nighttime band. Sorry, folks. 120, 90, 75, 60, 49, 41, 31, 25, 22. And you've got the 19-meter band still open in the northern hemisphere about two hours after sunset, and the signals will fade away. Welcome to the show, doggone. It's great to see you guys. Yeehaw! Wherever you may be in this doggone world, I'm so happy to see you. All right, let's get to it. I know everybody's excited because you always want to know who's first, second, and third in the show. Let's pull it all the way up. Let's find out who's first and second and third. Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know who's on third. First up, from Norway, he's done it again. Stian Bjorsvik, time number six. Lima Alpha 5, Lima Tenga Alpha. Welcome, Stian. Me, me. Good to have you, buddy. Welcome back. It's great to see you, Stian. Thank you, buddy. In second, all the way from Bulgaria, no kidding, Tom, Alpha Echo 1 Tango Papa in the U.S., Alpha 9 2 Golf Whiskey, Bahrain. Welcome back, Tom. It's good to see you, buddy. I sure missed you guys. Will Myers, third, from Wisconsin, Kilo Alpha 8 Golf India. Mike, welcome. It's good to have you back as well, my friend. Thank you. Roger McKeon and Molly, Kilo Juliet 7, Lima Lima X-Rays here. Andy Cowley, 2 Echo 0, Romeo Echo Echoes here. David, welcome back. Alpha Echo Zero Pop Hotel. It's good to see you. Kevin O'Doublehand, welcome. Laura Robertson, hello all the way from Italy. My goodness, welcome, Laura. Nice to have you. It's an honor to have you. Thank you. Wow. I'm going to try and scoot through as fast as I can here. Martin's here from Holland. Pop Echo 9, Tango Eddie Golf. Steve, 2 Echo Zero, X-Ray Sierra Hotel. Welcome back, buddy. And yeah, I'm feeling better just the voice isn't there yet. Greg, Kilo Fox Zero, Charlie, Union Zoo, all the way from Bettendorf, Iowa. Good to have you, Greg. Thank you. Yep, nice to have you, buddy. Also, Paul Hopman, that's a first-timer, and welcome, Paul. 
Oh. Thank you for coming. Tom in Bulgaria, welcome back, Larry, and congrats on show number 500, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thanks for all the, the congratulations. Man, that's very nice of you guys. Also, I want to welcome Wine and Wine comes all the way from the continent of Africa, from the country of Namibia. Welcome back, Wynan. Good to have you, buddy. Wow. And thank you, guys. All the nice words. Moses is here. Hi, Moses. Dwight Hitchens. Glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Jason, November 5, Victoria Hotel Tango. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> Whew, what a group today. Elmer time. That's Jeff in Portland. Alpha Echo 7. I'm going to mess it up. It's been a few days. Sorry, Jeff. Uh, Alpha Echo 7 and Pop Hotel. I think that might be it. Thank you. Sorry. Goodness gracious, look at this. Charlie from Red Summit RF is here. Hi, Charlie. Good to see you, buddy. On the road heading back home. It's good to see you, my friend. Look at this, and I hope I don't say it wrong, all right? Ed Sardet Fudwinkle, welcome all the way from Great Britain. Welcome. Wow. Hmm. Nice group today. Aaron Lutz is here from Canada. Victor Echo 5, Echo Mike Lima. Good to have you back as well. And thank you guys for your kind words. And uh, Charlie, thank you. It's, it's, it's good to be here. Ron Walensky from Monroe, Washington, November 8, Whiskey, Charlie Romeo. Welcome. Uh, we'll get to your, your answers here for the question today. I don't want to miss to say hello. Will Kilo, November 6, Tango Zulu Kilo. Welcome back. Good to see you, my friend. And uh, Adam's here as well from Ocala, Florida, November Yankee 5 Echo. Mm, let's see, Rod Bish from Eastern Pennsylvania. Well, sorry, West Pennsylvania. You only have two choices. It's one or the other. And, of course, I got it wrong. You're way off. I right. say you're way off this time, son. I know, right? Okay. Welcome, Rod. Whiskey 3, Mike Papa Golf. Wow. All right. I think that's everybody. Let me just make sure I don't miss somebody. Tommy LaBeouf. LaBeouf. Sorry. Tommy LaBeouf. Welcome. Kilo 4, Victor, Tango, Echo. Theodore, welcome back. 2, Echo 0, Golf, India, Yankee. What a nice group. Ed Kilo 3, Charlie Uniform is here as well. And, uh, wow, we got a good group here today. I don't want to miss anybody. Say hello. Um, I think that's it. Good. All right. We have a special guest for you. And this is an honor for me to, to announce this man. When I had nobody on this channel, there were 37 people, and I think they did that just to be nice to me, to be honest. That's mighty hospitable of you. Yeah, like that. So, you know, it was like there's really not a whole lot of people here. But this company came up and sent me a received loop antenna that I still have. And I'm so grateful for it. I owe so much of the success in reaching 500 shows here on Ham Radio Live to this gentleman right here and his crew at MFJ, Richard Stubbs Live, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Congrats, Larry. That was an awesome uh, presentation of the weather and the uh, frequencies, man. That was incredible after your two-week hiatus. Oh, if I could just get the video part right, we'll be great. <laughs> Richard, <laughs> you, you all, you've had COVID there bad too, man. Tell us about what you guys, you guys have all had it, haven't you? Oh, yeah. It's, you know, of course, we are on the anniversary of Mike's death, you know, of, uh, yes. two years ago, or I guess it was two years. No, maybe a year. Yeah, it was and, a year ago. Yeah, he, he died at this time a year ago, I think. And that was our production manager, so... Yeah, we've had uh, everybody's, you know, it's when you work in a factory, it's it's tough. You you have people go down and go out and then they got to come back. And and uh, yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been real tough. And everybody's uh, catching this new one. That's for sure. Oh, it's it's murder. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Keep your hands clean. You, you don't want this. I mean, you don't want it at all. At all, you don't want this. Just say you walk through the hallway and somebody coughed, and then you got it, you know? Yeah, and it and it stays with you. It don't go away real quick. That's for sure. Right. Richard, how's things going at MFJ? How are, how's, how's production? How's pr supply? How's everything going right now? I think uh, everybody in the world probably could tell you that we're still uh, behind. We're still on back orders, but you know it's a good thing to have when you're a factory to be constantly building product. Uh, they've even got me doing uh, a few little things back here, uh, putting some caps and screws together. And you're doing uh, production. Everybody, everybody's pitching in, Larry. I mean, you That's gotta, awesome. you gotta, gotta help out when uh, we're behind so much, and <laughs> and getting people. You know, we're, we we have put on. Uh, a, uh, a hiring spree uh you know we're trying to get people to walk through the door and want a job and work you know so yeah, we're taking amazing. on uh, just about anybody in, that walks through the door 
and uh, because we're still so far behind. Uh, the parts shortages, obviously, we're still dealing with uh, that at high gain and Cushcraft and, and uh, things with MFJ as well. Uh, slow boats from China, as you know, uh, sitting out there in the Pacific Ocean waiting to get in yeah. to the customs offices and so on. But we're, we're here, we're live, we're well, we're, we're in our 50th year come October, and uh, everybody's uh, still kicking in and, and uh, putting those orders out and trying to just build and build and build, man. You know, it's, it's a daily struggle. Yeah, it, it is. And it's not just MFJ. I mean, it's all the manufacturers. It really is. It's all the manufacturers are facing these things. And, you know, you try and get through it the best you can and you say, OK, this is the hole we fix next in the dike. Here's the next little plug we put in and so forth. You know, it's pretty amazing. It really is. Is it what's really hot right now at MFJ? I would say, you know, it's still all the main things. The automatic tuners are still the hottest thing going right now. We just cannot make enough of them. We have not been able to generate stock. Uh, they are hot. I mean, every single one of them. The remote ones, the the NSHAC models, of course, the 939 I, uh, I, K, and Y, those are hot little numbers. And, yeah. and if we could build them all right now, we'd be making lots and lots of money. But uh, yeah. we can't, you know, it's still, it's a, still a process. And, and Richard, talk for a second so. about the 939, because it is such a fast tuner. I mean, I've had, you know, really quick tuners that are, you know, aftermarket, but I've never seen one that's that lightning fast. How did you guys come up with that design? Uh, well, I mean, Mr. Jew, and uh, there was another gentleman that worked here uh, for a long time. He was a, a, a Mississippi State graduate, and he was a software guy. So he wrote the software and um, just uh, made it mi happen in milliseconds. I mean, he, you know, it, 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 it takes those uh, uh, relays, and you hear a bunch of chattering, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're in. You know, it's, it's like really millisecond tuning. Uh, in most cases, yeah, and yeah. Uh, he did a he did an excellent job. That was probably, gosh, probably ten years ago, or maybe even Is more. It really? Time flies when you're having fun, Larry. You know that. <laughs> Your 500th show. I mean, you know, 50 years in business for MFJ. It just flies when right? you have a good time, right? That's coming up here in October for Mr. Jew, isn't it? Yeah! Yes, it's, it's 1972 to 2022. That Amazing. is. 50th year uh, come October Amazing. and uh, incredible feat by Martin Jew. He, he's, uh, he's still here every day doing his thing. Uh, and in fact, he came to me and he said, Richard, how would you like to build a few things? You know, and so I, Hey man, yeah, I'll do whatever I got to do. If we could, if we got to, if we got to build some stuff, let me know. I'm, I'm not great with these hands, but uh, yeah. I, I figured it out. I built a few caps for, uh, 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 what are the the resist the uh, the uh, RFI isolators? Okay, that yeah. Little nine fifteen thing. Yeah. So I'm putting caps and hardware together with nice. the SO two thirty nines. Nice. Everybody's doing a little bit of something, trying to help out. Stan Bjorsvik from Norway. Great comment. His call sign Lima Alpha Five Lima Tango Alpha. I have the MFJ nine nine eight remote tuner. It's awesome, man. Yes. That is such a great tuner. It's you know full power. You know, you can use it all the way to full power. And if it's the remote tuner, like what Stian has, man, you just, you tune it right there at the, at the source of the antenna and you have no SWR issues coming up your blind. That's like yeah, a lot of people problem. putting those, those remote tuners out at the uh, flagpole antenna. And I yeah. think you did that too. Yep. Sure did. Worked really well. Uh, Paul says, what do you think of the MFJ 1925 switcher box? He has a question about it. 1925 is the ATAS controller. Um, I don't think that's a switch box. That's a, it's a controller that allows you to use the ATAS uh, screwdriver antenna with uh, any radio. Mm -hmm. Okay. ICOM, uh, Kenwood, Yesu. That's the uh, Yesu screwdriver antenna, the ATAS. That's what the 1925 is. Yeah, okay. And I'm gonna ask all the questions. Uh, Theodore, two Echo Zero Golf India Yankees got a question to Richard. He says, "Do you know why you're not selling full analog transceivers?" And I know the answer here, but I'll let you get why. Why you guys don't sell transceivers? Well, 
you know, first of all, just keeping up with what we do well, which yes. is tuners, the manual tuners, the automatic tuners, the dummy loads, the uh, switch boxes, the, you know, all the accessories that we do. We do have a line of transceivers. We don't make multi-mode or multi-banded uh, radios because of Kenwood, ICOM, and Yesu. Yep. Um, and, and obviously, it's a very expensive proposition, and mm -hmm. getting parts in nowadays is oh. tough. People yeah. have asked us to make one of our simple little radios and make it all banded, but it's just not uh, enough market there to uh, yes. stop all of our other production on all of our stuff that that normally sells uh, very well. I, so if there ever ever becomes a void, obviously we could do that. But uh, right now, I think ICOM and and Yesu are pretty well taking care of that market. Yeah, you know, I I always like an MFJ to like if you buy a car, right? And you want to put a great set of wheels on it, you go to a show a store that's got wheels, you know, they got the nice looking chrome wheels or whatever you like to put on your car. MFJ is kind of like that. They're the accessory store. It's where you get the stuff like your antenna tuners, you know, your your multi-band antennas, you know, all those things that you guys sell, you know, your antenna analyzers, you know, the stuff that you need for your amateur radio. It's the accessory store. So I always thought of you guys in that realm, you know, it, it, would that be pretty accurate? Yeah, two, 2,000 some odd different products. I mean, if we counted the actual price list, it's probably more than that. But, uh, you know, we make everything around the radio. Mm -hmm. And um, those are important products, too. The, you know, the dry dummy load or the wet dummy load. Yes. Uh, those are very important products to have in your station so you can test your, your gear and make, yes. sure it's, uh, make sure it's right before you take it on the air. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, frequency counters, you'd mentioned the analyzer. I mean, that's been our bread and butter product for a long, long time. Yeah. I don't know when it's ever going to stop selling, but it, it's been amazing. Yeah. Most user-friendly analyzer on the market. Uh, you just flip the band switch, put, put hook up your coax, and, and check your antenna, and it's pretty amazing. Um, it all, and we just keep on moving them, man. It just, that's I, great. I came here in 94, 28 years ago, and we have sold so many analyzers. It's just unbelievable to me. Yeah. yeah and everybody bet. always kept saying, you know, the bosses would say, I wonder when, when it's ever going to stop. When is the market going to stop? <laughs> it never has, Larry. Yeah. And I know a lot of people that have them. Yeah. You still got to check your coax. You still got to check your antenna. You know, you're going to need those things to be able to do them right. I, I do want to say a very, very special hello to Rodney. Rodney's a dear friend of mine, and he's in Holland, Pop Alpha 9 Romeo Whiskey, and I've missed the heck out of him. He says, hi, all just passing by this time, won't stay long, kind of sick. Rodney, I hope you feel better. I mean that sincerely. I hope you don't have COVID. I hope you feel better and get well soon, buddy, okay? Get, get well. Get some rest. Get well soon, Rodney. It's a good thing to do. Yeah. But one thing, you know, is, is like, you know, I remember I remember Tom from Bulgaria once saying, you know, there's probably not an amateur out there that doesn't have a piece of MFJ gear, you know, of some sort, you know, because you guys make so many things. What right now do you think you're, is something you're super excited about that MFJ is making? Well, we do have that new, uh, and at Dayton, uh, the Hamvention, we did... Uh, launched the new product we had a couple of new products sitting out there but the 419 so the mfj 419 uh it has not got a price point yet because we're still in that early stage but we have built the prototypes they work well it's called the cw elmer this this little guy larry looks like the little code reader our code tutor i think i've sent you those before yeah and it's got an lcd on it but this one you key into so you're practicing keying and seeing in the English what you're sending, but it also has a built-in, um, what do you call it, a, um, a QSO, where you're gonna key into it and say something and something's gonna come back to you. So you'll practice reading, hearing, and keying all at the same time. This thing is gonna be fascinating. It's uh, the CW Elmer, it was built by a gentleman uh, and he ran an article in QST magazine a couple of years ago, but he sold the rights to us now and 
and we're going to sell those and he's going to make royalties on it and it is a fabulous product because a lot of people are getting into cw yes uh more in the morse code than ever before and i think it a lot of it has to do with the doomsday and the you know the COVID and well, all you know, this it's, stuff going on. It's the most reliable method of transfer most of reliable, communication, man. Right. Really One is. and a half watts, the CW signal is going to get through, and the voice yep. won't. And the yeah. QRP people are digging it. They're just all over that. So, I mean, like Charlie, you know, from Red Summit RF, November Juliet Seven Victor, dear friend, super smart guy, and he's great at CW. I know he is really, really good, and I think you met him also at Dayton. Great guy, really good at Morse code, and I'm grateful you guys are still focusing on that. You know, because there was a lot of worry, you know, back in history, ham radio history, when they took code out of the, the license requirement, they thought, well, that's going to be the end of code now. Actually, it's been yeah. the exact opposite. It code really is, has helped. Code yeah. has exploded, yeah. yeah. People, you know, products came out to help the average beginner get into it, and I've talked to a lot of these guys at the shows, and, and they're really – absorbing Morse code better than, than 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 ever before and this new little device um i showed it to uh one of the uh dayton u forum uh mm -hmm. presenters it was a young girl and she wants to buy it she she got a, a gift certificate from the forum and she wanted to buy that 419 right there and i said well it's going to be a little while <laughs> But I handed her off a code tutor and let her get started on that. Nice. And uh, she is she is fascinating. It was uh, she was 12, I think. No kidding. And and she spoke on Morse code. She's really wanting to learn Morse code. Wow. And uh, oh, there's great. a lot of people wanting to do that because yep. you know that it's the it's the communication um, at the end of the world type deal. Yeah. Hey, we got to be able to get that signal through, you know. But you know, we got a couple of young ladies here um, who are both teenagers, and they both know code. They're just really good wow. at code, and they're, you know, their dad made it that they had to learn code before they got, you know, moving along the amateur radio. And so I, I just admire both of them so much because I'm a person that just fights with it, you know. So, I, you know, but what you guys sell is really good, and I want to share a comment from William Myers and in uh, wisconsin kilo alpha 8 golf india mike he says if you've been an amateur radio operator for more than a few months the odds are pretty good that you have at least one piece of mfj equipment that says a lot <laughs> about mfj yeah yeah you know, yeah. You know yeah. it's hard for people to believe that you guys actually build stuff by hand still yeah yeah i mean uh there's uh let me show you what i've been doing this little this is the sample my it probably looks better than mine but this is this is a little cap. Uh, the RF isolator is going to have um, coax on uh, Teflon coax. We'll have ferrite beads on it. Uh -huh. And uh, these caps are going to go on each end of the PVC. And then you run your coax through here and to your antenna. And that'll keep RF from traveling down your coax line. But yeah, uh, this is punched out by the, the shop. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, somebody's got to put this little hardware together here. Yeah, hold up a little, higher, tab a little on higher. There. Richard, could you hold a little higher for us? Oh, yeah, yeah there you put, go. Yeah. Put the solder tab on here, and then you got to run the Teflon coax, put the ferrite beads on it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of hands-on stuff that goes into our products that people just don't realize. And, yeah. um, you know, I was going to tell a, st a neat story about that one. Mr. Jew is always thinking, right? So he bought a machine. Uh, it's one of those uh, clay molding machines, you know, that spins around. Yeah. And he put a dog bowl on it. And then, <laughs> and then he put all those little ferrite beads on it. And then he had a magnetic tip. And you hold it over the dog bowl while it's spinning. And the beads climb onto the strip. Instead of having to put each one of those on one by one like with your hands. Yeah. The thing just climbs up there, and you count how many, and then you slide it onto the coax. That's amazing. It's, yeah, it's silly Jeez. things like that. A dog bowl and a clay molding thing. Uh, you know, we've come up with uh, gadgets to, to make our work faster and everything. But, 
uh, it's it's amazing the amount of intense hand work that goes in still, even though you've seen you've seen our factory. We yes. have the modern machinery. We have we have the wave solder machine. We have the surface mount machine that puts all the little small parts in. But you've still got to have a lot of people power yes. to put all these products out. And um, and my and favorite just, part of that, Richard, is all the people who get employed because of that. Yes. You know, you haven't automated everything. You have your you have a whole bunch of people now who have jobs who can, you know, afford a home and take care of their family because they've got a job at MFJ. And and right. that's the best part of what you guys do. It's not changed over all these years. I, I'm always impressed with what you guys yeah. do there. And you know, a great thing that we also do is we we, we give people second chances. Uh, we take people from all walks of life, man. I mean, we've got uh, two young autistic guys that are working for us, you know, and they they have trouble in some jobs, but we can put them down and they can focus on this one thing. And uh, well, that's why I'm over here doing this. They put yeah. me there too. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you know, you're I'm off scatter brain everywhere, so you know I've got to I've got to uh, calm down by putting together a few MFJ pieces. Oh, no, well, you're answering yeah, the we, phone we for a, a while. You're just like doing everything there for a while. We do it. We do a great job of bringing in all kinds of people and teaching them something, a trade. Yeah. And they learn, and they've got some great experience to go out the door with. But hopefully, they stay here forever. Yeah. Yeah. I've been. I've done. Uh, man, it's been an adventure. Like Mr. Drew said when I first started here, he, he said, "You want to go on an adventure?" I said, "Yeah." I've, I've been to a lot of places, a lot of ham shows, done a lot of things in my career here. Um, advertising, the marketing, of course, that you know of, and then uh, the tour guide. You know, I took that on and absorbed that, and I love that position. I, I just gave two tours this week, Larry. Did you really? Yeah, even though things are kind of crazy, Slow. and yeah. you know, but we still give the tours. And um, but yeah, just walking around and giving a tour, you learn something new every day. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, Absolutely. we had a we had a gentleman come from Michigan. He was on his way down to Florida, and he made it a point to stop by MFJ. Oh, wow. And we had somebody that was heading to back out west somewhere, I think Arizona, mm -hmm. and he was coming from the other side of the coast too. So yeah. that was, and they made it a point to stop at MFJ. So that's great. Uh, it's always been cool to see who walks through that door. Yep. Yep. That's we had, the, we had the Netherlands come here one time. He made a, a point to come to MFJ, MFJ. U.S. That's vacation. Sweet. He That's went to sweet. New York City, of course. He went to New Orleans, but he also came here at MFJ. That's pretty cool. And you guys have won a lot of awards, too, for design and for building things as well over the years. What, what do you think is one of the most prestigious awards you guys have won? Well, I, I think uh, probably... Mr. Jew would probably say he's most proud of that Asian Pacific Heritage uh, Award that he got out in California for being, you know, an engineering uh, electronics and all that because yeah. that was his heritage type thing. But we've gotten a, a lot of uh, awards over the years. Uh, we have a Queen Mary uh, from Long Beach. Uh, that I don't know if you've ever been yeah. through that, but they yeah. have a big ham station up there, and yep. and we flat. had all the high gain antennas were on there when we bought high gain. Uh, they gave us an award for for sponsoring that and and helping with that. But but I think my my personal thing is the, is the Dayton U form. We sponsor that, and it is a tremendous thing. If you ever get the chance to go watch these kids speak about amateur radio and their personalities that come out she usually has about seven presenters mm -hmm. and these are young kids anywhere from 12 to 18 that give these talks on amateur radio and so we we sponsor that program along with icom mm -hmm. uh and there are some other people that have jumped on the board but we've been there from the very beginning back when mr juice started it gosh 40 years ago i think right. it's carol perry uh from new york that does this and they in combination with the RCA. So I'm, we're really proud of that. Uh, that's been something we've done for a long, long time. And, and getting youth in the hammer amateur radio has been a big, big uh, thing of Mr. Jews. Yeah. And also the Boy Scouts. We always did the uh, sponsor of the Jamborees and stuff like that. And uh, help them with their radio side. That's great. That's great. Live with Richard Stubbs from MFJ celebrating a little 500 with me. Thanks, Richard, for that. That's you rock, cool, man.
No, you, are. you do, dude. I appreciate you. <laughs> Alvin Norris, nice comment. I always stop at MFJ Dayton or Xenia to say hi to Martin. I really miss seeing him this year. Yeah. And yeah, you know, he didn't he didn't go this year. Um I forgot he actually had a ballet recital to go to, his granddaughter. <laughs> See, what I love about him is he puts his priorities right. That's that's what you should do, right? I mean yeah, yeah. you get one chance to be a grandparent, you know. Oh yeah. If, if you're blessed to have a kid that, you know, Treat you the right way. You can be part of your grandchild's life, man. That's the best thing. And if you don't, it's catastrophic. So, man, you know, bless his heart for doing the right thing. I know I would have done the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah, he's got two grandkids now, and they're going to start having these events, you know, that they got. <laughs> he's going to be a busy to, guy. He'll have, to, he'll have to, hey, hey, i got to go do this or mm-hmm. do that, you know. So. Yeah, you know, and, and there's a comment here about the MFJ uh, telescopic whip. Theodore made He's got a couple of couple of problems, I think, with MFJ issues. And, you know, Tito, I, I would just say on this product, he's, he's talking about the 17-foot, uh, the 1917. So he's talking about the, the telescopic whip. Yeah. Uh, talking about, but where is the bottom of the antenna? Well, you got to remember, you know, you, you could use a stake with it. You can mount it to a bumper. You can mount it to the side of your vehicle. There, there are different mounts that MFJ makes for that antenna specifically for your application. That's what it is. And Tom has used that antenna to work all over the world from Bahrain. He's even worked North Korea with that antenna at 85 watts. Tell us a little bit about that. That's just a magical little whip. Larry, that uh, 1979 has spawned probably 10 products, as you were mentioning. We sell the 1936 TWC, for instance. What that is is a ground rod with a clamp on it. You slap it down in the ground. You hook that 1979 to it with the coil for 40 through 6 meters, and you've got this great antenna right out of the ground. Uh, the 2286, the big uh, stick, we call it, that uses the 1979 telescopic whip. Uh, the big ear, the 2289, yes. which yes. is in this got formation, the, coils. The, yep. the V, or the, yeah, the, in, in, like an inverted V, two dipole, uh, two uh, 1979 hams, uh, whips sticking out on each side, 33 feet of radiating power. Yep. Uh, yep. That and you've product, got the coils uh, for that too, so you can work 40. Right. Uh, that, if you're in a park situation man. and you got one of those Tar Heel screwdrivers or some other screwdriver antenna, put that big old 1979 uh, 17-foot whip on your Tar Heel instead of what you got there, and you've got a better performing antenna all the way across the band. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. I mean, I've Never seen those things used uh, just as they are as a 20 through 6-meter antenna. Uh, of course, you got to have a base to it. you got to have a, a connector or something to connect it to a tripod or whatever. Um, but the whip sold by itself can be adapted to whatever the customer needs. Right. It's a, it, it just matters on how you wish to mount it. And that's, that's exactly. the thing to remember. Like Tom mounts his on a ground stake. He uses the, the, um, the what is it, the trailer hitch mount. And then he's got mm-hmm. it put onto a piece of rebar that goes in the ground. And he doesn't use any any ground radios at all. And the thing just works. Absolutely works. Yeah, yeah it's pretty amazing. I want to welcome Wicked Loud one to the show. Thanks for coming back. It's good to have you, all of you guys. Thank you. I mean that with all my heart. Uh, Jeff up in Portland's got multiple MFJ products. Has all worked as advertised and have for many years now. Um, I love you guys. The fact that you have it's uh, the no questions guarantee. It's no worry warranty. You know, you get yeah, a full yeah. year uh, and something breaks, you go and you send it back. And I I've had, had that. guys, uh, you, I've had you know, guys crying my... on the phone. Yeah. Because they accidentally broke, you know, dropped their analyzer on the floor. And I said, well, are you under warranty? You're under a year. We're going to cover that no matter what. And he, it really means that no matter what. If you dropped it, you broke it. Uh, we still fix it, and yeah. uh, that's a that's a major league plus for us. I mean, oh, we've done sure. that for 50 years, and it's been an incredible, um, incredible warranty. Yep, very good. Thank you. Live with Richard Stubbs for just a few more minutes. Celebrate show number 500 of Ham Radio Live. For gosh sakes, that's amazing. Thank you for doing that. Stan Bureau. 500, saying, Larry. Gosh, can you believe it? Oh, man. 50 I'm years. Sorry. 50 years for Mr. Jew. 500 for you. <laughs> 500 yeah. shows than it is. There you go. Stan Bureau has an interesting point. He said, an improvement tip for the 998 remote tuner. 
He says, the waterproofing isn't great on the threaded screws where it goes to the plastic cover without any seals under the screw head. He had he built his his piece. But he just says, you know, maybe a little bit of uh, some, some weatherproofing around that. And, you know, that's something that Richard will bring to engineering and talk about. So thank you for that. Paul Hopman says it well right after that comment. He says, American ingenuity. And I love that because yeah. that's really what it's about. Truly is. You know, and, and that's part of my... My favorite part of MFJ is that I might remember the long hallway that leads to the back big room where all the people are working. Gosh darn it, man. How many people typically are working back there in production? We, I mean, we hover around 200 in all of the factories, Larry. That's including Ameritron, High Gain, and Cushcraft. Of course, MFJ has the most employees, and there's yeah. probably 60 back there behind the curtains. And, uh, and then you've got... Uh, you know, people in the metal shop doing, you know, the behind the scenes stuff that nobody really sees, but very important uh, projects that are happening over there. You know, the metal bending, the metal punching, the deburring, the uh, the silk screening, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But yeah, we've got uh, we've got a number of people working back there and, and it's like a bunch of little elves yes. and they're all. They all got special personalities, and they're so great to visit with, and, they and they're proud of their job. And and uh, I, one of the autistic kids I was mentioning, I was giving a tour the other day, and he, he was so proud. I, I you know, the, I had a customer there, and he goes, "Oh, I built that! I built that!" And he shows me, you know, two screws, two screws. It's a folded mount. What it was was the apartment antenna that sits down in your window, and the window closes down on top of the yes. bracket. I got he that. Was, he was building those brackets, and he was so proud of what he had done. I mean, that is cool, and they, man. And they did look good. He, he did a shiny, nice job. That is cool. That really yeah. is. But like we, take, we take those great people like that and just put them down and teach them a little trade, and they, they go to it. That's great. It really is. And you guys, you know, I've been there before. I've taken the tour, been through, you know, all the different plants. And, you know, is everything perfect? No name a product that's handmade that is and and made over and over and over and over and over again that's the honest truth because that's what they do and they and have quality control i know you guys look at everything some things don't don't get I me mean, they get missed i mean that's life that's human error but for gosh sakes you sell thousands of products out that big i think i think the, that's the biggest problem is when you're you're building something Say I'm over here and I just built these, these caps, and then they hand me something else and I start on that. Your mind starts yes. focusing maybe on the wrong thing, you know. And uh, so when we're constantly changing hats, you can easily have something happen. But hopefully we catch it before it leaves and, you know, it's right there and uh, we can send it back or get it get it fixed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We had uh, the other day, in fact, one of the ladies uh, put the wrong sticker on the outside of the box for a product uh, because it was packed in the same similar box that she thought it was. Oh, gotcha. but it was a it was an automatic tuner and she had the 1261 on there or something. But she caught it before it went out to the shipping bay. And then, That's good. you know, all we had to do was put the new sticker back over the top of it. But yeah, you're going to have when you got human beings doing stuff. But even robots make mistakes. That, yes, they that, do. That surface mount machine is not perfect. I mean, it'll drop apart every once in a while, and you've got to have somebody. Luckily, we have Sandra there to inspect that board. Yes. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, just because the machine did it doesn't mean it's perfect. Tell us real quick, we got because we got to scoot. Tell us real quick about the worry-free warranty you guys have. And I know that sometimes, like, we got someone here who said, uh, and, and Wine and Wilmerant's from, uh, he's actually from Namibia. No kidding, in Africa. And wow. And he says, what parts you have for your products like ATU, et cetera, tuners, analyzed, et cetera. Why? And it's in their catalog. And you can find a lot of that stuff online at MFJ. Just search MFJ for, you know, for product. And that hopefully will help you out. But I, what I want to ask you here real quick, Richard, is, you know, I've, I've seen what you guys do there and how much pride goes into what people build in MFJ. Is there something that, you know, you guys have in terms of, oh, hold on, we got a question from Mike, I'll get to it. Um, the worry-free warranty, you know, talk about what that means, because, you know, you'll even, I've, I've seen you guys, you know, where you guys will, you know, someone else messes up pretty bad, and they fry a product or whatever, and you guys still take it back and fix it. And, and that's uh, the, for the full 12 months. 
man, do, do you guys have quite a few products coming back or is it just kind of always the same, like so many products come back for so many sold? No, it's not, we really don't. I mean, um, I'm right now, we're, we're out of a person in the back and receiving. So I've been going in there and receiving the pro the boxes in and checking those in. And uh, we don't have, what we got coming back really is repairs from 20, 30 years ago. I mean, people were still using those 259s, yeah. the original, the 259B, the C, it's now a D model. So yeah, we're getting back repairs. Uh, warranty repairs is just, just doesn't typically happen like that. But if it does, we take care of it. You know, yes. we'll put a call tag out on it. We'll go, we'll pick it back up. We'll, and if we have another one, we'll, we'll replace it and send that out first with the return label. Um, but yeah, that's not, that's not a big deal, really. I get a question uh, from just, Mike. He's a extra in Jacksonville. Call sign Kilo Golf to Mike Mike. Question. I have a brand new MFJ 868B, which is the big face meter. Yeah, the big watt meter. He says I one of the, the light bulbs has blown yeah. out. Can I just get a bulb shipped to me instead of having to send the whole thing back for repair? I think that particular one is the whole meter itself with the bulb in it, but I'm, I'm not sure. But yes, we, if we have bulbs, we can definitely do that. I'd have to investigate. Tell him to email me at mfjcustserve at mfjenterprises.com and I will uh, get him the information on that bulb. There you go, Mike. So in order to get a hold of Richard on it, just go to mfjcustserve at mfjenterprises.com and Richard will answer your question. Hopefully they can send you a new light bulb and that would make it simple. Richard, yes. any last words you'd like to share with people? And by the way, thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing this with me today. It means a lot that you're here on 500, seriously. Thank you. Larry, I want to thank you. You've been just as good of a friend to me as I've been to you. Um, Bless your heart. You know, when I when I met you, you came in this in this uh, factory and you loved everybody and gave them all those words of encouragement and thanked them, thanked each and every person on that line, yeah. and you know, Thanks. God blessed them and and you, you gave them you gave them so much encouragement and everybody remembers you here. Uh, your family visit Is that right, here. Really? Oh yeah! Oh, oh yeah! Man, but thank you, you. You made my day. You strike a good uh, uh, camaraderie with everybody. Thanks. Uh, and nice. and you know they just wanted to hear those words from the customers themselves. In fact, every time I give a tour, people usually are like that. Although you were more graceful than many of them. Yeah, uh, you are. A you special have man. been a fascinating individual, a pro at what you do. And I'm so happy that we were able to help you get to show 500. That was incredible. Thanks, buddy. That's really it's been an incredible run and an incredible friendship. Me too, man. Thank you, Richard. I appreciate that, Richard. You know, I'm with Tom in, in Bulgaria. Nice comment. He says, I know if I get to the region, visiting MFJ is on his bucket list. Get a hold of Richard. Same email, mfjcustserve.com at mfjenterprises.com. Let him know when you're coming, and he'll get it set up for you. Full tour. Certainly coming tour. Um, we are, you know, we had that brief shutdown during the Delta crisis, and then, but, you know, this new one, there's no control over it. Uh, we're still giving tours. We're, we're inviting people to come see the factory, and, and we want to show off what we do because we're really proud of it. Yeah. Well, Richard, we want to thank you, really. And if I didn't get your questions, thanks, you guys. All of you. Paul Hopman, nice comment. I have an MFJ 1796 antenna. It's almost 20 years old. Works great. And that's that's really good. Oh, by the way, we got to also tell you, Luca is here. Hi, Luca. Luca's here Luca. from Italy. Yep. That's our ambassador. That's him. For Europe. It says, hi, Larry, yeah, and greetings to my boss, Richard, 73 the India Whiskey 7 Echo Echo Quebec, Luca from Italy. Luca has done an incredible job, Larry. He is uh, uh, translating manuals into Italian, Spanish. He's a really incredible uh, person himself. He, he uh, I think, three different languages and uh, no, four and counting his Italian. And uh, he's doing videos also now, Larry, and he's doing them in Italian, obviously. Yeah. But he's doing some reviews for us, and he's just really getting the word out there to Europe. And he started that uh, Telegram channel 
uh, there in, in Europe, and it's big over there. And that one's grown to 700 members uh, so far. And he just started that like this year. Wow. So Congrats he's, growing you, as, he's growing as fast as you are. Congrats. That's well, I hope I hope he goes faster. I really do. Andy oh, Brunson yeah. made a comment. Mike Seven X Ray Tango Tango. You know, Andy, if if you ever have missing products in in any MFJ thing, just contact them. Let them know. Hey, this is missing. I'm missing these items. And they'll take care of it. Just let them know what's missing. That's that's the main thing. We will take care of it. That's what we do. Yep, absolutely. And thank you guys. I got by the way, I gotta do this. This is great. Uh, this is continent number four is here now. This is Indy from Australia. Victor Kilo to X Ray Bravo. Gurday Larry, congrats on five hundred listening whilst driving in the Australian Outback. So wow. signals will be in and out. Welcome, Indy. Good to have you, mate. Good on you, mate. I mean that. Yep. Yeah. Richard, we're gonna let no, you go. Tell him no fosters while driving. Yeah, no fosters, Indy, while driving. None of that, right? <laughs> stay, stay sane. All right. All right. Um, there actually let me let me do this real quick. I want to get to Nikolai. He's a young ham in Romania. Before we go here, let me just do this real quick. His call sign Yankee Oscar 8, November India Kilo. He says, as always, I'd like to ask for some advice. For a beginner in ham radio, maybe some recommendations on MFJ products. You know, uh, so we, we mentioned the radios a while back. That, you know, we do have starter radios for single band, uh, either sideband or RCW. And that's a one uh, economical way to get started in the amateur radio HF wise. Um, I still like to recommend, you know, the, the good ICOM radios, the 7300. Um, Absolutely. We, we have, we have a lot of the old 718s uh, models here. You still got the 718? And, really? Oh yeah. Nice. Well, they, we use a lot of them for testing. I, mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of deal we struck up back when, room. when Ray started working for ICOM all those years ago. He used yeah. to work for MFJ. So yep. we may, we may have gotten some kind of deal on those, but we have a bunch of those. And uh, the guy, uh, we, we like his brand because he, he worked for us and he's such a good guy for Ray amateur, is fantastic. You know. Ray. Yeah is a great ambassador for amateur radio at ICOM. But a quick, yeah. a quick tuner for the, for the automatic, the 939, obviously you, you recommend that one. Yeah. And uh, for the manual tuner, if you want to play with knobs and the capacitors, uh, the 949E, um, good starter antenna tuner. And then uh, from there, you can add accessories as you go. Uh, but there are some easy, easy antennas. And what's really going hot right now is those infrared half waves. Yes. 1982 uh, HP, 132 feet of wire down to your matching box. And those uh, are very effective and economical. You know what? You, you're such a special dude. And, and I appreciate you. I asked for 20 minutes. We've been here now for 45. No kidding. <laughs> Seriously. No I, told, I told you in our email that we'd like to chat. So we'll chat. We sure did. Problem. Rich, I'm going to let you scoot so you can get your work done. And I want to thank you get, for being I'll part of Show 500, brother. Production on here. Yep. Yes, you got to get running. Larry, hey. congrats. You rock. I love you, brother. God bless you, Richard. God bless you. God bless you, brother. Thanks for being part of Show. All right. Let me give you a little Hulkster first here, real quick. Oh, look at that. That's pretty darn sweet. Check out. He's got the everybody's Hulkster. Got, everybody's got a Hulk out every once in a while. There you go. All right. Richard, thank later. you, mate. God bless you, man. We'll see Peace. you soon. All right. Talk soon. All right. Thanks, Richard. Bye. See you later, buddy. That's that's right there. One of the classiest people in all of amateur radio, Richard Stubbs. And, you know, the whole thing well, it came about where I'd asked him a while back because we thought we'd do show 500 months ago. No kidding. It was supposed to be the week of 4th of July. And then my family started having some medical issues. You know, my dad passed away and all that. And then things just kept going kind of awry, you know. And Richard just kept saying, hang in there. I'll be there. I want to be there. I want to be there. And, and I really want to thank him for that. And, and take a moment as well. These are two things I received in Mississippi when I was there. And I'm very honored to have them because these are, these are signed. And to me, this is so special. This is a uh, MFJ. This is one of their QSL cards. This is from uh, their plants. This is the K5 MFJ that Mr. Jew had signed. And then this one is Mr. Jew's personal call signs. This is QSL card K5 FLU. Thank you for that. It's huge. Huge stuff for me. I'm just a normal dude. 
So thank you to Richard and all the gang at MFJ. And welcome, by the way, to all you guys for being here. I appreciate you. Uh, first timer, November Yankee 2 Sierra. Tom, good to see you. Welcome to the show. Nice to have you. First timer. How long of a backlog on the MFJ 1788? I don't know on that. Um, if you want to find out, uh, you can get a hold of Richard at MFJ Cust Serve at MFJEnterprises.com. Hit him at that email and Tom, he'll be able to help you with that. MFJ Cust Serve is in like customer service, but shortened a little bit. So MFJ Cust Serve at MFJEnterprises.com. Thanks again, Richard, for being part of the show. We got some news for you that I hope you guys will like. This is important stuff because a lot of people were wondering about this over the weekend. You've got one more weekend to do this. There's going to be Antarctica on the air this weekend. Yes, and it's coming from some Argentine hams. San Martin, this Antarctica Island number 016, Belgrano 2, Alpha November 016, it's again Antarctic Island, and Marambio, which is Alpha November 013, are going to be active this Saturday. It's the last Saturday. They did it every Saturday in July. They're supposed to be active from 1300 to 1800 UTC. Now, I know last week they came on a little late, about an hour late, started about 1400 UTC. But check them out this weekend and be listed around 1300 UTC. Folks in the States, the earlier you work them, probably the better because you're not going to get directional antennas down there. It's either going to be a vertical or a wire. So 1300, just to give you an idea about time wise, that's going to be roughly 6 a.m. Pacific time. All right. So 6 a.m. Pacific time zone, seven in the mountain, eight in the central and nine Eastern. Try and work Antarctica. Three call signs down there working. Lima Union 1 Zulu Delta, Lima Union 1 Zulu Golf, and Lima Union 4 Zulu Sierra are the call signs to work Antarctica this coming weekend on Saturday. Only on Saturday. But a chance to get Antarctica in your log, right? And that's pretty cool, right? It's good to see you guys. Man, I didn't think we'd ever get here. So I'm really grateful to spend some time with you guys. Um, you know, if you've not had COVID, you're very blessed. If you've had it, you understand. It is not a good thing to get. And, you know, my hope for all of you, wherever you're in the world, is that you try and stay away from it because it is not, it is not a good thing. So thank you for the kind words. And, and everyone, this is just a, such a special thing. Rod in Pennsylvania, Show 500, congrats, Larry. It's been fun and informative. Thanks and glad to see you're better. It's been a rough month for you and your family. You folks have been in our prayers. Thank you, Rod. You know, I, I received some from Carlos. Remember, Carlos is coming. He's coming in August now. He says, dude, your life sucks. You've got to get some good luck. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you, Ryan. Thank you all for, for your kindness, not only in Discord, but your emails, all that stuff. It's meant a great deal. So when I was sick in the middle of Saturday where I felt crummy but thought, let's go play radio, Larry. I got a couple of calls. Let me show you. If you're not an Oregon Duck fan, excuse me, but this will make Avery happy because she made the little duck back here. The little duck is pretty special to me. He helps do the weather here, and he's also my little pal. So, yeah, my little duck back there. So I'll show you a little bit of work on the 7610. This was from Saturday. Don't look at the frequency and try and work me because this is just a recording. Here we go. Hi, everybody. Okay, so it's Saturday. Um, this is uh, the 23rd day of June, 2022. I'm still... Recovering, recovering here from COVID. So the good social distancing we can do on ham radio means we can use our radios anyway. Today, I finally feel like using it. So we'll see if we make a call. CQ, CQ on 20. This is Kilo 7 Hotel November. Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ. CQ, CQ from Oregon. This is Kilo 7 Hotel November. Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ. Kilo 7 Hotel November Kilowatt 7, Hotel November, calling CQ to any station, anywhere, and listening. CQ, CQ, from Kilo 7, Hotel November, Kilo 7, Hotel November, calling CQ. Kilo 7, Hotel November, Kilowatt 7, Hotel November, Calling CQ to any station, anywhere, and listening. So we worked a little bit. We had a little fun. We moved a little forward, and we're going to get a call in. So let me get you this. Actually, someone answered me. 
instead of waiting, wasting your time. All right. So end of CQ call would be here and the They're response. Over. So uh, I yeah. just copied the over on that one. I just <laughs> want to let you know you're being heard here, and the band was short. So uh, I'm going to say 73. Uh, thank you for the signal report, and uh, good luck. Uh, let's see. This is Kilo 3, Mike Alpha Hotel. And repeat your call sign one more time, please. Thank you. Yeah, that's no problem, Jonathan. My call sign is Kilo 7, Hotel November Kilowatt 7 Hotel November, QSL. Uh, QSL, Kilowatt 7 Hotel November. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, sorry I can't uh, have a link show here, uh, but uh, um, I appreciate you uh, giving me a good signal report and uh, uh, good luck. It looks like, uh, you know, um, uh, 20 is, it won't be too bad today after the solar flare. Uh, K7. HN, this is K3MAH, uh, 73s, and good luck. Yeah, thank there you, you so much. A little fun on the radio. And, yeah, it, yeah, the, the comments are there because of the voice, right? Because it just, this stuff gets really deep in your lungs and just rattles around for a while. So it is one of the things. And, why? yeah, I, I typically put the recording function on, but what I did was I went and I reset the radio. And yeah, so there you go. But I do like to use recording function typically, so I need to put it back in. Once my voice gets better, so good idea. I'll do that. I'll do that again. No kidding. And again, I want, there was somebody that said something. You know, Seamus from Portland. Uh, his mom died from COVID last year. It's serious, folks. I'm very sorry to hear that, Seamus. I'm really sorry. Because just coming back out of this thing, I can see why this kills people. I mean, you, there's no way you don't have to convince me, dude. It is some really bad stuff. My condolences to you and your family, man. Lionel, I do want to welcome you. You're first timer. And what I love about Lionel, he's a shortwave listener. That's my heritage. Lionel, welcome. Good to have you here. What a treat. Seriously, Lionel, welcome to have me alive. Good to have you, mate. All right. Let's see if we can help some people just like the old days. We had a little fun. Decided we have some fun and said, let's play. help people with ham tests online and we'll do it today in the general license. Aruba, First, we'll listen to a little Caribbean music, right? This is Beach Boys of 85. Gosh, it's fun. In fact, I started to CQ calling with this this week on uh, WRMI. But the voice is even worse than it is today. How about that? <laughs> just let the whole song play. Now, today's Ham Bites is powered by Ham Tests Online. It's a software that knows you. They have online courses for all the ham radio license exams from the technician all the way to the amateur extra. Find them online at www.hamtestonline.com. This is for the general license. First question today, where is an S meter found? The S meter, okay? We talk about S meters in amateur radio a lot, right? Because that's how we give our signal reports. Some people will do it based on what they is, you know, having their head because they've done it for years. Some people look at the radio. It's not, it's not a wrong way to do it. Some people are experienced enough to know where it is. But in this case, there's three, there's four answers here. Okay. First one in an SWR bridge, that's not where an S meter is found. Second one in a conductance bridge. No, in a transmitter getting closer in a receiver. That is where you'll find it. Yes. S meter is found in the receiver, the receiver of radio. So it's either, you know, if in your transceiver, you're going to have it, you'll see it either digitally, like if, it, for example, it might look like this, okay? You see the S meter kind of is right up here at the top. It's, it's above the uh, waterfall. So that's the S meter. Uh, you can look in different ways. It can look like that. That's another version of an S meter, but it gives you an idea where an S meter is. It's going to be on your receiver of your radio, okay? Next question. Which digital mode is used as a low power beacon for assessing HF propagation? Now, you might not know this. Very interesting question. The answer here is actually whisper mode. Yeah, whisper mode is a great way that you can find out who hears you around the world. And because we're using low power for the most part, whisper mode doesn't cause a lot of QRM. It's just a low power transmitter that's like a beacon. You don't make calls with it. You just get heard with it. So if you get this question, remember WSPR is the answer for a low power beacon for assessing HF propagation. You'll have it right. Third question of 10. When must you add the special identifier, the special identifier, Alpha Golf, so AG, after call sign. So, for example, 
let's say my, my call, K, K7HN, slant AG. I would use that if I just had moved up to the general license from technician. Okay, that's where you'd use it. So basically the question here is, when must you use that? And, and it adds here, after your call sign, if you are a technician class licensee and have a certificate of successful completion of examination, which is a CSCE, for general class operator privileges. But the FCC has not yet posted your upgrade on its website. Okay, so this is a situation where you're you've already in the system, right? You're already a licensed amateur. You've already got your call, but you're now licensed up to general. How when, when must you use AG? Now, the answer here is whenever you operate on a general class frequency. That's really it. It's number three. Whenever you operate using general class frequency privileges and yes, it'll come through in the ULS database afterwards but you keep using ag with your call sign until it pops up in the fcc database the cool thing about when you license up versus when you get licensed is you can use the privilege right away that's the big difference so if you license up to general alpha golf then you use it when you're using a general frequency if you license up to amateur extra you then would use this land ae after your call sign when you're on extra frequency. So it's a great way to do it. You don't have to wait till it's in the system. You can use it. Just make sure you use slant alpha golf after your call sign. Okay. So this talks about it right here, all right? KT for authorized technician, AG for authorized general and slant AE for authorized extra. Do that and you'll have it right. Just remember it's only when you're on general license frequency. So in technician land, you know, you don't have a whole lot of HF privileges, right? Only 28.3 to 28.5 megahertz on the 10 meter band. But when you go to general, now you got a lot of HF privileges. So just make sure if you're on one of the other bands, just use slant AG after your call until it pops up in the database. That's it. Next question, which of the following is a characteristic of QPSK31? All right. One, it is sideband sensitive. That it is. It's true. It is. Two, its encoding provides error correction. Yes, it does. Three, its bandwidth is approximately the same as BPSK31. That's true as well. So that means all of the choices are correct here. All of these are characteristics of QPSK31. It is sideband sensitive. Its encoding provides error correction. And its bandwidth is about the same as BPSK31. So if you answer that all choices are correct, you'll have this one as well. Next, what is the limit for transmitter power on the 28 megahertz band for a general class control operator? This one is simple. And I'm going to help answer a lot of questions for you here, I hope. Okay. It's 1500 watts PEP in the States. All right. If you're not in the States, for example, Canada, if you get the advanced license, you can go 2250 watts in Europe, say in uh, Great Britain, only 400 watts. That's maximum power. Okay. This is the same thing. It's maximum power on 10 meters. We can't go to 2000 watts PEP. We can go to 1500 watts PEP. There are a couple of bands though where you have to be very careful of your power, all right? And I'd like to get, help you a little bit with that here, all right? If you're a technician on 10 meters, you can't go over 200 watts. That's one of the power restrictions. 30 meters is one we all face. That one, you have to be careful in terms of power. Only 200 watts PEP for all users on 30 meters. Remember, 60 meters is five channels. That also has a limitation. You can only use... 100 watts. That is the maximum power for 60 meters. On 80 meters, if you're a novice or technician, if you're using, you know, Morse code, 200 watts. That's your limitation. So there are some limitations out there, but for the most part, when we're talking power, the real difference is going to be 30 and 60. For us universally here in the States, 30 is 200 watts PEP, 60 is 100 watts, and that's it. Okay. So good way to try and remember. Just, you know, the call sign, sorry, the, uh, the power, and you got it right, okay? All right, next question. How does a ferrite bead or core reduce common mode RF current on the shield of coaxial cable? We're going to let you all play along now. Okay, everybody gets a chance to play. 
Okay, how does a ferrite bead or core reduce common mode RF current on the shield of coaxial cable? Is it A, by creating an impedance in the current's path? Is it B, ferrites expel magnetic fields? Is it C, it converts common mode current to differential mode? Or is it D, by creating an out of phase current to cancel the common mode current? Let me know with A, B, C, or D. First one to get it right, we'll just give you a big old applause, okay? Again, how do ferrite beads or cores reduce common mode RF current on a shield of coax? You know, excuse me, guys. When you have your coax out there, it also can act as an antenna, but a ferrite bead or ferrite core can change everything and make it so that you don't have that, that coax acting like an antenna. That's basically it. First one that answers it. Theodore, dear friend in the UK, it's good to have you again. Thanks for coming. Two Echo Zero Golf India Yankee answers A by creating an impedance in the current's path. And he is 100% correct. That's right. Theodore, well done again. That's awesome. Yep, it is A. What happens is these, these beads, you know, what they do is they create an impedance in the current's path. And that helps to screw you screen out the RF that might be on that cable. That's the answer. Ron also got that in Eastern Pennsylvania. Andy Cowley got it as well. And Wine and all the way in Africa did it. Well done, guys. Good job. That's correct. All right. Next question. Only have a few more. Which of the following is a disadvantage of multiband antennas? On this one, the answer is they have poor harmonic rejection. Okay. Disadvantage of multiband. They have poor harmonic rejection rejection. If you remember that, you're going to be okay with this. It, remember, they're asking for a disadvantage, not an advantage, okay? An advantage of a multiband antenna, of course, you can work multiple bands, right? But a disadvantage is they have poor harmonic rejection. All right, next. What is the simplest combination of stages that implement a super heterodyne receiver? Now, this is kind of going back into older technology, actually came out in about 1919, super heterodyne. But it's been the same ever since, okay? In, in a simple super hat, okay? Your answers here, first one, RF amplifier, mixer, IF discriminator. That's not it. Next, HF oscillator, mixer, and detector. That isn't it either. Next, HF oscillator, prescaler, audio amplifier. That's not it. Next one, RF amplifier, detector, audio amp. Excuse me, that one's not it either. It's the one that has a mixer. It's the second one. HF oscillator, mixer, and detector, okay? When you have those three items, that's part of a super heterodyne chain. The problem with the other ones is the, the, the first one, right? RF amplifier, that's not there. It shouldn't be there there. You have an HF oscillator. Remember, the oscillator is part of it and the mixer. If you remember oscillator and mixer, you'll always get this question right because this can be very confusing for people who are trying to license up to general, all right? And here is basically the stages of a super hat. The antenna out there first, then the RF filter and what that does, and this is where ham test online really excels in terms of teaching you things. It talks about what the RF filter does. It selects a range of RF frequencies to be processed. Then the RF amplifier, it amplifies it, which makes it stronger. Then you have your mixer. This is where it combines with the output of a local oscillator to produce two new signals, the sum of the difference. This helps keep a radio on frequency. That's really what it does. And finally, the intermediate filter filters out everything except for just one of the generated signals known as the intermediate frequency. That's it. So intermediate frequency filter. I think I said intermediate filters. Intermediate frequency filter. But that's part of a super head. Then it goes into the intermediate frequency amplifier, the detector, and the audio amplifier into your speaker. That's how it works. All right, next. What combination of the loops? Now, this is an interesting question. What combination, sorry, what configuration of the loops of a two-element quad antenna must be used for the antenna to operate as a beam antenna assuming one of the elements is used as a reflector. All directionals work the same, whether they are a hex beam or a Yagi or a log periodic or a two element quad. Your reflector is gonna be a longer element. If you remember that on all of those antennas, 
you have a leg up on this. You really do. The reflector is going to be the longest element, all right? Think of it that way versus the director being the shortest. Even though that's true, try and remember the reflector is always the longest. In this answer, it will help you. Number four, the reflector element must be approximately 5% longer than the driven element. You'll have it right. And that's true with all multi all these antennas are the same. Your directive element smaller than your reflector. Your reflector is bigger, right? Remember that. And that'll help you with a lot of questions on the test. All right. What makes HF scatter signals often sound distorted? Imagine a flashlight going through a mirror that's just been shattered. Okay, so you have a, a shattered mirror, you shine a flashlight onto it, right? What happens? The light goes all different directions. That's what happens. The same thing happens with your radio, okay? When your signal is, is hits like e-skip, right? What makes HF scatter signals sound distorted, all right? The reason why, it's because it's coming through several paths, okay? The answer is energy is scattered into the skip zone through several different radio wave paths. That's the answer. Think of it like the, you know, the, the illustration of, the, of the, the flashlight hitting a broken mirror, and it will all make sense to you. Our radio signals work the same way. Exactly, right? Uh, we got two more. Here we go. Which of the following frequencies is in the general class portion of the 40 meter band? The easiest way to remember, if you're not familiar with band plans, divide 300 by frequency. If you divide 300 by frequency, you'll get the answer correct. Number one and two are not in the 40 meter band. Neither is number four. They're, they're not in 40. But if you were to go, let's say for example, okay, 7250, right? So let's say, because that's the right answer. So you go seven, uh, th sorry, 300 by 72.50, and your answer is going to be 41.379, all right? That's the closest answer to 40 meters. But keep in mind, on 40, not a lot of these things add up because 40 meters just doesn't mathematically work as well. But that's the closest one, and it is an amateur band, 7250, in the States, not in Europe, not in Africa, not in Australia, here in the States. We get up to 7.3 megahertz. Remember that, guys. It's different for people overseas. We end up getting to 7.3 because we don't have shortwave broadcasters here in the States that we have to be aware of. That's the reason why we can go to 7.3. Last question, which of the following devices can be used for impedance matching at radio frequencies? All right. The answer here is all of the choices, every single one of them. A transformer, a Pi network, a length of transmission line, all of those can be used for impedance matching over at radio frequencies. Thanks to AmTest Online, helping us to power up our general class today, the little general ham bites. They are so good at what they can help you learn. They have a money-back guarantee if you don't pass the test. Find them online at www.hamtestonline.com and let them help you license up. They will. They'll do that. They're good people. All right. want to remind you, a couple guests. We got some good ones. Carlos coming to talk about jumping out of airplanes. Kilo Delta 9, Oscar Lima, November. He's back on August 27th, 1900 UTC. Please join us for that show. We're very honored and grateful to have Carlos join the channel. That'll be fun. And this weekend, Jason from Ham Radio 2.0 is coming. That's going to be a ginormously cool show. I am so grateful that he's coming, and I hope you are too. It'll be this Saturday, 1900 UTC. Remember, that's 8 p.m. in London, 3 p.m. in the Eastern Time Zone in North America, and noon Pacific here in the States. He'll be taking your questions live about his YouTube channel, about Ham Radio, and more. Gosh, this could be a fun show. Please join us for that this weekend. Then on Friday, September 9th, meet Hayden from Ham Radio DX down under. He'll be talking about amateur radio, his YouTube channel, and a whole bunch more. That's Friday, September 9th at 23 UTC. That'll be fun. We have a question to show. If you could test drive a radio, what radio would it be and why? Okay, we have some answers to this already, and this was fun to do. Because this question is kind of like a what if, right? If you had the chance to work any radio, what radio would it be and why? And the answers that came in, I think, have been pretty darn fun. We've heard things from, for example, a 7851, a 7300, 
a uh, few, few answers. I want to get to those here while we can, because there are some pretty good answers that people have put together. Tom in Bulgaria test drive the TS-890. Why? Well, why not? Yes, sir. <laughs> I agree. I love that radio. I have, I have the brochure still here. Such a great radio. It really is. Oh. Kevin O'Doublehand in Ireland, the radio I would love to test is the ASU FDDX 101 Mike Papa. Reason is to get a comparison between that radio and the FTDX 5000 MP, especially on weak signal work. You know, Kevin, I love this comment because I've had both radios. The 5000 and the 101 MP are literally cousins. They really are. It, not only in the layout of how the buttons are all laid out and the switches on the radio, but also how they work. They really do. Instead of having, you know, um, the IF, the, the IF on the, the 5000, where you can adjust the, uh, the IF frequency, the incoming frequency, you get VC tune on the 5000, sorry, on the 101 MP. It, it, they are so similar in terms of their performance. I think Yesu hit it out of the park with that, with the 5000. The 101 is just the SDR version of that radio. And man, my experience with them has been very similar, to be honest with you. That's my experience with it, just sharing with you. And I thank you for adding to the show because that's a good comment. Yeah. You just happen to pick a radio that I had both of. And, and they're very, very good. Very good radios. Gosh, good radios. Man. Steve, show question from, you, from uh, Great Britain. I come 7300. Seems like a good upgrade for my current radio. And trial run allows me to collate evidence to convince the wife I need to buy one. <laughs> it's true. Will Myers in Wisconsin. My answer is the Tentec 588 Omni 7 Plus. I'm an old Tentec guy. Thanks, buddy. That's good. That's great. <laughs> Tom says the XYL was also Larry as well and on 500. Bless your heart. Thank you, Tom. You guys are so, so kind. Aaron Lutz in Canada, Victor 05 Lima Golf. I'd love to try the ICOM 7851 in the shack. There's a 7851. Yeah. Beautiful. Estian heard some sideband activity on 10 meters. Yep, I'm not surprised. It, it should come right about sunset because the way that the MUF map is working now is the same as it was we last met, gosh, 10 days ago. Can you believe it? Take a look at right around gray line. Do you see how 10 meters kicks up north? That's why. If you wait till right about sunset, just before sunset, late, late, late afternoon, early evening, 10 meters becomes open. It really does. So nice comment by Stian. Totally true too. And you'll find that, that those signals come in, but you just have to be patient. So Stian, thanks for the comment. Nice work. That's true. Yeah, it does. It really works well. You just have to be able to, you know, wait for it, but it'll be there. 10 meters will be there. By the way, Tito, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for coming today. It's good to have you back. Nice group today. It's nice. Paul says, I'm torn between the FTDX 10 or a flex radio. You won't lose out either one of them. They're both really good products. Yeah, Paul, loved both of mine. Love both of mine. Uh, let's see. And he says, every theater, bless your heart. Every single time I'm jealous of that, of the Geochron, bless your heart. It's a nice little product. You know, it's only, gosh, it's, it's maybe this long, as long as this pen, just about that, that high. It's very small. Has a little antenna to it. Nice product. It, I, I've liked it. Tom, invited to go fishing tomorrow. We'll bring the 897D as well for some portable ops. Always multitasking. Well done. <laughs> Paul says, first time live, Larry, but enjoying your show for a while on Team Replay. Bless your heart, Paul. Thank you. That's so nice. I want to get to this to Kevin. Bless you, Kevin. Thank you. He's got a YouTube channel that's really special. He goes to a lot of work to do his stuff. His call signs Kilo Zero, Kilo Lima Bravo. Welcome back, Larry. Glad you're feeling better. Thank you. I'm meaning that. Thank you, Captain. Yeah. Yeah. Andy says, Larry, you missed me, so I think I deserve a beep beep. Oh, well, okay, go ahead. Meep, meep. Go. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, it's good to see you guys today. I really appreciate it. And William says, the product shortage is even at 10 Tech. And they're everywhere, guys. Product shortages are at Elecraft, they're at uh, MMFJ. Everyone's dealing with product, you know, product shortages just because, you know, the chip shortage is out there. And Kev, there it is. Yep, the chip shortage. Yep. 
it, it is something that has affected a lot of ham radio stuff. So again, today's topic question is very simple. What radio would you like to test drive for about uh, who knows how long you test drive and have some fun for a little while? What would it be and why? And that's it. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's great to see you guys. And this is good, too. Theodore, one bead equals one turn on a toroid. You're right. <laughs> great. Oh, man. All right. Let me catch up. Oh, hold on. Wine in the flex sees about the SDRs and the 7851. So he'd like to try a flex and a 7851. Wine and thank you for that. Good. That's good. Yeah. Adam in Ocala, I'd like to test an antique pair, maybe an old FT-101 receiver and the matching transmitter from Yesu. That's pretty sweet. Wow. Oh. Kevin says uh, that his first radio was an FT-101 Echo. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. And uh, Mike, thank you. Glad you're feeling better, Larry. You look and sound great. Bless your heart. I can tell how hoarse I am, but I'm just so happy to be here with you guys. Thank you. I mean that. Let's, uh, I want to celebrate somebody with you real quick because this is important. My favorite part of the show is always to try and celebrate someone that comes to watch it. I'm not perfect at this, but I've loved, loved radio my whole life, guys. And this is my time to say thank you. And I mean it with all my heart when I do say thank you. So let's go ahead. And why, why don't we cue the music? Why don't we play, uh, I don't care. Let's play, uh, let's play some ELO. All right. Let's go in all the way into the state of Maryland. No, Virginia, sorry. Not a good start. Jared Marsh, Alpha Echo 5 Lima Golf. He's a dear friend of mine. Lives in Falls Church, Virginia. His call sign, Alpha Echo 5 Lima Golf. We made a call together too while Larry was sick. Let's take a look at it first. Here is Jared by his gear. He's got a Elecraft K3. Look at that. Also, he's got a uh, Meritron amplifier sitting there. And if Jay, uh, he's got the, uh, wow, he's got the inductor tuner there. It might be like a 969. That'd be, that'd be Jared. Jared's got like a, a doctorate in nuclear physics. No kidding. Alpha Echo 5 Lima Golf is called. So he used to work at MFJ. Here's where he lives, Falls Church, Virginia, as we move out. You see, he's very close. He actually works for the federal government in Washington, D.C. How about that? Yeah, that's Jared. Lives there in Falls Church. Going out a little bit, taking a look at the eastern seaboard. That's where Jared's from. And in the States, he's all the way there on the East Coast. He's a Louisiana boy at heart. And he is really, when you talk about rocket scientists, this dude is it. Alpha Echo 5 Lima Golf, Jared Marsh. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being a part of Ham Radio Live. Wow. Thanks. Appreciate that. Seamus says, love my 7300, but that 7610, oh my. <laughs> Rod from, East, oh, I almost did again, Western Pennsylvania. Oh my goodness. How, what am I thinking? Nutty is a fruitcake. Yeah, pretty much. And I come 7851. Why? Because I'll never have had, be able to afford one. <laughs> oh, that's great. Winin' from Africa. Yeah, used to wish for a 7851. Want to see what the roofing filters do through the, it, but the 70, sorry, this, and the 7610 had them. So he's talking about comparing the 7851 to the 7610. Nice work, Winin'. Appreciate that. Again, our topic question, if you could test drive any radio, what radio would it be and why? And that's it. Let's go up to the upper deck. We'll see how the angry hams feel about today's show. We'll throw a couple trivia questions at you as well. What was that? That was very strange. It was very weird. It was peculiar. It was kind of amusing. Yes, it was rather funny. It was incredibly funny. I loved it. Hilarious. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> 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 The, uh, the world is leading 60 to 50. Here's the question. If you qualify for DXCC, which is DX Century Club, you would automatically also qualify for Worked All Zones. Is that true? Or is that false? Okay. Think about the question. If you qualify for DXCC, which is DX Century Club, so you work 100 DX entities, you would automatically also qualify for Worked All Zones. Now, think about that Worked All Zones map. Remember? We looked at that the other day. It's like 10 days ago now. My gosh. Zone 40. Remember, Iceland and Greenland were both in it. Okay, so would this be true or false? A or B? First one with the right answer gets some points. Good luck. That's funny. 
Martin, thank you. Yeah, that's that. We'll, we'll play an open for that. We're going to do an open for that, but I couldn't help but love that one. That's just a good song. Uh, Mike says, updated his QRZ page as well. Got a new desk finally and redid the shack. Nice work, sir. Seamus, top tier rigs are way out of my price range, but would love, but I love what I have and feel blessed. 7300 at TS2000. That's a great try. What a great trifecta. Seamus, that's beautiful, man. Yeah. Will Myers, first one to answer, he says, B, false. Because, and he's right. He's actually right here. It is false. And here's why. Because you can work 100 DX you know, entities, but the work bell zones is 40. And you may not get all of those, those places. You might get a whole bunch like in, say, zone 7 or zone 6 or zone 2 or whatever. But you're not going to be able to automatically qualify for work bell zones. It's a completely different thing. That's why it's wrong. William Myers, correct. Well done. 6055 now. Aaron Lutz also getting it for North America. Victor Echo Fight Lima Golf, correct on that. Anton and Holland got it. So did Stian. I didn't fool you guys. You guys all got it right. Look at you. It's like I've been away 10 days and you still are brilliant. Well done. By the way, Dale, welcome. Dallas, Texas area is here. Kilo India 5 Tango Sierra Foxtrot. It's always my pleasure to see you, Dale. Thank you. All right, last question of two. Here it is. Can I have a QSO via satellite at a frequency around 180 gigahertz? There's the key word. 180 gig. Can you have a QSO via satellite way up on 180 gigahertz? A is yes. B is no. First one with the right answer gets the points, and we can have a tie score by the end of the day. Could happen. 60-55 right now. Yeah. Can you have a QSO via satellite at about 180 gigahertz? Will Myers, my goodness, first one in, and he says, and by the way, he, he could go two for two with this. He says no, and he is 100% right. He's two for two. Oh, man, that means the next show, you could tie the record. The record is three. Yeah, three of them in a row, and so that is correct. Yeah, Will, you're right. You cannot do 180. It's too high, so you're not going to get a satellite there. Andy Cowley also has that right. So does Steve. Aaron had A, Seamus with B, Anton with B, Mike with B, and Stian in Norway also had the had the right answer here as well. We had that question today. If you could test drive any radio, what radio would it be and why? And my hope today was to try and get you on the radio a little bit and try and make a call or two, but my voice is a little bit tired here, so I hope you understand. This show means a lot to me. I don't look at subscriber count. I can't tell you how many subscribers the show has. I don't know that, but I do know what number the shows are. 500 is a lot, and it's really important for me that I want to do this real quick. I want to thank some people, because for me, this is something that I look at that I'm very grateful that I've accomplished because it's been for the love of ham radio and not to borrow ICOM's tagline, but it's because of the love I have for amateur radio. So let's go ahead and let's play a little bit of beach boys and give you a moment to thank some very special people who helped make it happen. First up Ray Novak from ICOM. Ray has been a guest on our channel on two occasions. Will Fortain also has been here from ICOM. Want to thank Ray and the gang at ICOM for coming onto the channel, being a guest, and answering questions from people around the world. I'll never forget it. Martin F. Jew from MFJ. Man, I love this guy. He is my favorite person at Amateur Radio, and that's no slight against anybody in the world. If you knew him, you would understand why. Martin Jew, his company came behind me when I had 37 subscribers. I wouldn't be at 500 without this man or without this man who is here earlier, Richard Stubbs. Yes, Mr. Richard Stubbs. And that, by the way, is taking the Portland, Oregon HRO store. So thanks to Richard and Mr. Jew, as well as Ray Novak from ICOM. You guys have been amazing, but that's not all. Looking back over the years that I've done the show, also, I want a big thank you to Eric Schwartz at Ellacraft. He was huge. Yeah, Eric Schwartz came on to talk about the K4, and I remember that. And Ray, I'm sorry, Eric, thank you for being here and being part of that. Mike Walker as well came on from Flex Radio. And Mike, you've been on twice. We've had you on twice on the channel. Thank you to Flex Radio and Mike Walker for being another manufacturer who's been part of Ham Radio Live. Steve Dynas, one of my favorite people in all of amateur radio right there. 
He is the owner and founder of Alpha Antennas. That's Steve right there. He was on our show, and, and I really owe so much to him because he, he let me review his hex antenna, and I think it's one of the coolest remote antennas you can put up anywhere. Steve, thank you for being a part of Ham Radio Live and being part of the history of what we've done here. I mean that. Thank you. As I have so much to be thankful for, I do. Gosh, all of you listeners, the viewers here, Tom and, and Rodney and Wine and um, everyone, I don't want to miss people. It's a problem. You know, the Andes, you know, Rod, uh, you know, I could go on and on. Rob, you know, there's so many people who watch this channel through the years that have made it special for me to do too. You know, being away for 10 days with COVID was hard. It was, it was awful. And I missed doing the show. And I missed all of you. I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, thank you. This is 500 shows. I never thought that would happen. And it wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for all of you. To all of you, the viewers of Hair Radio Live, thank you from the bottom of my heart for being there for me. Because you helped lift me up when I was down. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to close the show. I'm going to uh, do a, a sign-off. First time, I've never done this one. This is in honor of Richard Stubbs coming on. So we went to Jackson, Mississippi, found a real old one. This is right before Analog went to digital, remember? <laughs> okay, so this is on literally a UHF TV station that was also a network affiliated station. Hard to find those sign-offs, and we found one. Let's first see if we can help you to get your amateur radio license. We've helped 38 people with licenses on this channel. That is the most humbling part of doing this show for me. Thank you guys who have come and told me I've made a difference. That is humbling to me, and that's why I do it. Contact someone like the Radio Society of Great Britain. They're very good at what they do. If you want to get an amateur radio license, say you're a shortwave person like I am, right? But you'd like to get your amateur license, right? The Radio Society of Great Britain is so well equipped to help you find a club near you. And the reason why that's important is because they can answer your questions about amateur radio. They can help you to get the license passed. And they might even be able to help you with gear to get you started as well. But you have to start somewhere. So send an email to www.rsgb.org. Let them know you want to be an amateur radio. And they will do the rest. They'll send you a local club. Then you get to know them, and that's where the magic begins. www.rsgb.org. I want to quickly get to a, a little comment here that means a lot to me, and I'll close here. Kevin O'Doublehan, he comes all the way from the Emerald Isle of Ireland. I don't lose sight of that stuff, Kev. I don't lose sight of the stuff of where you all come from. From Africa, from Europe, from Australia. Dear friends, Indy, my gosh. <laughs> And do me a favor, play for, pray for Brenton Meadows, for gosh sakes. Guy's a terminal heart condition now. He's selling off his gear. If you've watched Brenton Meadows stuff, Victor Kilo 5, uh, no, Victor Kilo 3, Charlie Romeo. Dude is such a special man. And he's got a heart issue that's terminal. He needs a heart transplant. I found that out while I was recovering from COVID. And I just, my heart broke. He really did. He's selling up all of his stuff. So my thoughts and prayers go out to Brenton and his family. Kevin, I want to end with this because this is a really nice comment and it hits me right here in the heart. For myself and my family, thank you, Larry, for all you're doing to help others get into our hobby and giving them the self-confidence to pass the exam. Let me just say this to you all, and, and I mean this, and Aaron, we're going to say here too, Radio Amateurs of Canada, help you in Canada, www dot rac dot ca in canada to help you you can get your license you can get the highest license out there you can do this you really can you just need to do the first thing contact the large club to find a local club if you have the heart to do it you have the ability to do it i'm living proof of that you can get your license thanks for watching i'm ready alive today god bless you wherever you're on this world and thanks for letting me hit 500 shows. Till we see each other again, God bless you and goodbye, everybody. This is ABC.
WAPT Television now concludes its broadcast services for the day. WAPT Television is owned and operated by North Star Television of Jackson Incorporated and is located in Southwest Jackson on Channel 16 Way, just off Maddox Road. WAPT operates on full power as authorized by the Federal Communications Commission on UHF Channel 16 with 1,020,000 watts visual and 200,000 watts oral at an antenna height of 1,072 feet above average terrain. Join us tomorrow for the best in programming from the ABC Television Network and WAPT-TV Channel 16. On behalf of the staff and management, we wish you and yours a very pleasant good night. Oh, I love you.